Hi everyone, very good morning. Let me share my screen. We will continue the basics of integration today. Uh, we will start with the quick recap of what we did yesterday, uh, not yesterday, on the our last session. And then we will see how we can improve that thing. Okay, so we have two org. On the left hand side, we have the interview prep org. And on the right hand side, we have SM Shivangi org. On SM Shivangi org, we basically created a web service. So if I open the developer console here, uh, we just created a web service on the SM Shivangi org. And then we tried to do a call out by the interview prep org. So you can see this is a web service we created. And we have two methods, HTTP get and HTTP post. And from our interview prep org, we did a call out from the anonymous window. That's what we did last time. So this is not... Okay, let's see what we did. We will convert it to a class. And there was a HTTP code we did. So from our anonymous window, we did that call out and we were able to uh, call this class. Okay, we were able to call this web service. Now, because we were doing the call out from uh, anonymous window and we were for authentication, we were using the session ID. Uh, session ID is not a very good approach because every time your session will expire, that session ID will expire. And then to do the call out, you will be needing that session ID again and again. So we will have to improve the process. Okay. So if I open the Okay, now, so what we what I want to do right now is that I want to create a class which will do call out. Okay, so that we will have classes on both the orgs, the org which is doing the call out and the org which is exposing the API. So for that, let's create a new class and uh, call it call out to SM Shivangi org. And Let's create a method for blades that it do. From here, we will be doing the call out. Okay, so for call out, what we need, how do we do the call out? If I show you the standard HTTP call out, Salesforce, Trailhead, there is a REST call out trailhead available and I want everybody who is not comfortable with this topic to go through that trailhead and let me just log in. This is the sample code of any call out. Okay. Uh, this is for the get. Okay. <laughs> Similarly, if you want to send data, you will be doing a post call out. Because we have exposed only get and post, you can only do get callout or post callout. Okay. So let me just copy the code of callout here. Let's just copy this and put it here. Let me just do the excitation. And now here we need to provide the endpoint. Right? And we discussed last time is that this cases will should be appended with the, the base URL and services slash epic rest, right? So let's see if we have that already. No. Uh, all right. That is fine. Let us get the base URL. This is the base URL, and then there should be services slash apex rest. 
rest slash cases. That is what our endpoint will be because that's where we have given the URL mapping. Okay. And this is a get method and we have to provide the authentication as well. Right. So request dot set header because we'll have to provide the authentication as well. Authentication. And then here we wrote the bearer bearer token and then we will have to pass the session ID. So let's get the session ID in the SM Shivangi org debugate. This is our session ID. And we will copy and paste it. That's how we will get the response. And then we will debug the response system.debug. And here we can see response dot get status code. Let's call it this forms status code. And similar to this, let's also get the response body. Okay, let's copy the code of that. Yeah. So, Okay. All right, now let us try to do the callout and see if it is working or not. Okay, if we have provided everything properly, and if the syntax is right, then this should work. This session ID is nothing but the random code uh, you will get generated. And uh, this does not have any meaning as such by the look of it. But this is a unique identifier which only system will be able to understand. So when you will hit this endpoint, then this call will be routed to your SM Shivangi org. Okay. And at that time, this org will first do the authentication. Okay. Authentication basically means that whether you are an authentic user or not. Okay. So this authentication will basically check whether you have authentic access to that org or not. If you have, then only you will be able to hit that or otherwise you will not be able to. So this access token or you can say this uh, session ID will make sure that the authentication process goes through. Okay, let's try to do the call out and see if it is working or not. So this was not the... Let's execute. This method does not exist. Did I not save it? Okay, so this time we are able to do the call out. Let's see if we are getting a successful response or not. Okay, session expired or invalid session ID, which is normal, which is possible. Let's get the latest session ID. Hello. 
this this will give me a uh, same session ID because uh, I have checked it as if this should never expire. Okay, so there is there must be something wrong with how I'm doing it. Okay, okay. is it the issue with the session ID? Sorry, is that the issue with the session ID? Uh, I did not get you. Can you repeat? I mean, I mean, is there any issue with the session ID? I think session ID is fine. There could be some issue with uh, how I am doing it. In uh, maybe the endpoint is not right or something like that. That I want to recheck again. Okay, and then yeah. because session ID will remain same in this arc because I am admin and I have set it from the back. Uh, I have one contradict statement for that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, session ID is we have a TT, I mean, like TT, like time to lapse or something, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it is still, I'm not sure they have the concrete uh, statement for that. It is either two seconds or three seconds or four seconds. Mm -hmm. Different, different uh, people will give a different logic on that. Uh, session ID, I mean, TT will depend on the connected session timeout, connected yeah. app kit session timeout, mm -hmm. yeah, profile yeah. key timeout. Profile okay. message session ID and org wide session ID. So might be that this session ID might have got expired. That is what I'm saying. Could be possible. Don't worry. We will check that. We were able to do that yesterday. So we should be able to do that even today. So. Don't worry. We will check that. Nothing to be worried about. Okay, uh, just a second. So this is uh, from my session settings. I have uh, done it as if this should never expire. Okay, so authorization token and then bearer. Concept method is fine. And we wrote it in the same simple, right? Authentication. Okay, this is not authentication. Authentication. Okay. This will do the authorization. Now let me save this and try this again. Okay, invalid or header. Okay. There we go. Translation. Set header, translation, header. Spelling of authorization is correct, right? Yes. All right, let's do it again. Yep. So now we are able to get the successful response from SM Shivangi org, and we've got the information related to case. So we did nothing fancy. We just, whatever code we were using in the anonymous block, we are now using it from a caller class. That's it. That is the only difference we did. But what I want to say is that this BRA token is bound to expire because currently I am logging into both org as an admin and I have set it in a way that my token should not expire, but you will not do that thing for the, um, for the API user. So this, even though this works, this is not a very good approach because every time you will be doing call out, you will be needing to get the different access token, different session ID. Session ID will definitely expire again and again. And to do the call out, you will be needing a new set of session ID. Now, to do it better, to do it better, we will have to do certain things. Okay. Currently, what we have done on this arc, on interview prep org 
I have created a remote side setting so that I can do the call out. Okay. To improve this process, what I want to do is I want to automate this. Uh, I want to automate this process where we are doing the authorization. See, for any REST integration, author authentication and authorization process is the most critical thing. All the other things are pretty easy, but the authentication and authorization is very critical because it is not only dependent on Salesforce, but also dependent on other system. What kind of authorization and authentication mechanism do they support? Currently, we are doing for Salesforce. We will also do a couple of other callouts to other system as well. But let's first start with the Salesforce and then check the other. So what I'm going to do, I want to automate this authentication process so that we need not to go again and again to ask for the bearer token. Okay. And I'm ask, I'm using a lot of different terms, sometimes BRA token, sometimes access token, sometimes session ID. All they are doing is they are authorizing you. So this line is authorizing interview preparation to or to have to be able to perform the get operation in SM Shivangi or that's it. That's what we are doing here. To automate this process, first step is we will have to create the connected app. connected app in the org uh, where we have exposed our API. Okay, so let me write it down. To automate the authorization process, we have to create a connected app in the org where we are exposing our API or we have created a web service. Okay. So first step is to create a connected app in the org where we have exposed our API. So we will go to app manager. We will create a new connected app. Okay. Let's give it a name. Uh, let's give it a name. Call it interview rep to org connector. I want to give it a name so that that makes sense to you guys. Okay. Interview preparation to org is doing call out. So I'll have to create a connector for that org here. Okay. Uh, let's give any email ID for now. This is not a, I mean, this will not send any verification to this email ID just for the now, once you provide this, it will, it has a couple of options. Okay, for now, you need not to worry about all those options. Just think about this. Enable OAuth setting. Salesforce supports Auth 2.0 flow. And the moment I click on enable OAuth setting, it will give you a couple of options. Okay, now this enabling OAuth settings basically enables you to give a lot of access to this connector, like whosoever will be using this connector will have a lot of access. So here, basically what you are trying to do is, there are different types of scope. What kind of permissions you want to do? So if I, because at the end, by this connected app, a client secret and a client token will be generated. And that token should be given to the org which is doing the call out. So anybody who has that token and that client secret will be able to do all the things which you will provide here in the auth scope. Okay. So if I select everything, then it will give all the permissions that person will have or that person will be allowed to do in SM Shivangi or because we have given him this permission via this connected app. Okay, I will explain it again. Let me just first save it to um, localhost success. Okay, 
So now here, one thing you need to remember is that we have to provide a callback URL. For now, we will just give any simple callback success or, or local host or any URL you want to give. We will later on change it. Okay. And there are a couple of other checkboxes. For now, don't worry about them. Just whatever is coming as default, select it and provide the access. Okay. There are different types of access like full access and uh, uh, access interaction API resources like access connected REST API resources. So all these kind of accesses will enable interview prep org to, to be able to do call out to SM Shivangi org and to be able to fetch data or send data to this org or manage data to this org. Okay, that is the main purpose. For this simplicity, I have selected everything. But in a real project, you will not select everything. There are three, four things only you should be using to select. Okay. And I will save this. This obviously will take a couple of seconds. That is fine. Once this step is done, you will see that uh, consumer key and consumer secret, uh, you will get this detail. Consumer key and consumer secret. So if I click, if you click on manage consumer detail, it will again ask me to do the verification. Let me just quickly check my mail and I will explain everything. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. We have got a mail and code is triple five nine five eight. Okay. Let's do that. So you have got this consumer key and consumer secret. Okay. So let us write down what we did. We created a connected app on SM Shivangi org and got consumer key and consumer secret. Okay. That's what we did, right? Now, in the org where we are doing call out, which is our interview prep to org, here we have to create a auth provider. First, we will create an auth provider. Because of this auth provider, we will automate the authentication and authorization process. How? We will see that. Okay. So the moment you click on new auth provider, it will give you different option provider type. All the all the widely accepted uh, or you can say the orgs or the tools which we normally connect are given here. And Salesforce is also one of them. So we will first select Salesforce and then it will ask a couple of things. Okay, don't worry. Don't get uh, fancied about this. You can say here, assume Shivangi or auth provider. Okay, auth provider, okay. This name makes sense because we are connecting to SM Shivangi or okay. And here you will have to provide the consumer key and consumer secret. These are the two secret ingredients because of which interview preparation to or will be able to understand that we are calling SM Shivangi or and SM Shivangi or will be able to authorize the interview preparation to or because we will have the consumer key and consumer secret and these tokens, these random tokens will be verified here when we do the call out. Okay. So we will add both and we need not, yeah, we have to also provide the default scope. So uh, default scope is uh, something I will then for now, let me just use it. So basically this tells what kind of scope you will have on SM Shivangi org. You will be able to get the access token and refresh token and you will have the full access. This, this is what we will do via the default scope and we need not to add any comma with it. Just refresh token and then space and full and we just have to save it. Okay, I will take questions guys. I just want to first finish this and one attempt and then we want to, we will take questions. Now, once you save the org provider, it will generate couple of URLs. Okay. You will have to copy the for callback URL 
Okay, copy the callback URL and in the connected app, you go to this connected app which we created and click on edit. We provided a local host earlier. Just remove that local host and paste the callback URL. This is a very important step. This basically completes the whole uh, transaction of doing the call out and then going to the callback URL. Okay. And let's just save this. Now let's write down what we did now. We now have created a auth provider in the interview rep to org which is doing doing the call. Okay, that's what we did in the system. Now auth provider will obviously do the authentication automatically. Okay, authentication and authorization automatically with the help of consumer key and consumer secret. But obviously this will not be called automatically. So we have to create a named credential as well. Currently, we do not have any name credential. Let's create a new name credential. And uh, I want to do it in the uh, classic. And I'll tell you why we are creating a named credential here. Uh, let's call it SM Shivangi org name credential. Okay, this is what we are going to give it a name. Now, here we will have to provide the URL of our org. Okay. Always remember, guys, this, this is something you will see URL in your org. Okay. But what you need to send is this one. You can also bifurcate it that normal URL will have a lightning dot force in it. Okay. We need not to give that one. We need to have the classic URL, which is this one. You will have to send this URL. And even in the callout also, we are using that URL only. This does not have my dot. This does not have lightning. Okay. Which is there in the lightning. So remember, we'll have to copy this URL. Let's copy the URL. Okay. And here there will be two options named principal and per user. Okay. Select the name principal. That is fine. Now, authentication protocol is something which we can select different types of authentication protocol available in Salesforce. We will use auth 2.2, but there are other authentication protocol as well. And we will have a dedicated session on these authentication protocols. So don't worry about them. But if we select no authentication, that means whatever callout we are doing to this endpoint it does not require any authentication. Okay, this is not completely in this org's hand. This also depends on what SM Shivangi org wants. Does they want any system to be able to call them without any authentication or not? Or they want to have, okay. For now, we will select auth 2.0. The moment you select auth 2.0, it will ask you for the authentication provider. Because you have selected auth 2.0, Salesforce will expect you to provide auth provider like who will be doing the authentication and authorization for you. So the auth provider we created in the last step will be used here and we will select that auth provider and uh, scope should be full. I think we have already defined the scope there. So don't worry about it or let's call it refresh. And let's just save it. We need not to provide anything in this certificate. Save it. Okay. 
Save it. Let's, let's see if it got created or not. Okay. Named credentials and it got created. This one. Let me check if it is working. Okay, I have to also <clears throat> uh, start authentication of flow on save. Uh, this is an important step because the moment we save this, this starts authenticating and then you will have to provide your credential for SM Shivangi org. Okay, so you were in the interview prep to org. The moment you saved it, it starts the authentication process. Okay. And then if you will provide the right credential and login, then it will do the authentication. Okay. And then it will tell you that you are authorized to do all these things. Do you want to allow? You will say yes. And these are the permissions which we selected in the scopes. From left, we dragged all those things to right. These were the permissions. And once you are done with this step, you will see that it will tell you authenticated as a SMC Wangi, this user. So this will tell you the username, which we will be using to do the call out. Okay. Or, or you can say that this is your username for this org. Okay. And this process is done. We have created a name credential. We have created a auth provider. Okay. So let's write it down. We now have created a named credentials and have used our provider from last step. Okay, <clears throat> now we are done with these steps. Now what help will we get here? First, we need not to have this line. Second, we need not to provide the endpoint here. We still be needing the services slash apex rest slash cases, but here we can write down callout dot name of your named credential. Okay, <clears throat> let's see what we did now. We we were using this authorization header and then passing the session ID. We no longer need it because that is already available inside this name credential. This name credential has an auth provider which is doing authentication for us. Okay, and then we were using the we were using the endpoint here directly instead of giving all the endpoints. We have this name credential which has the base endpoint already. Okay, we just need to build on top of it. And let me just make a correction here. And save this. So what we did is that we used callout. This is how you add a name credential in the endpoint. Callout colon, the name of your name credential, and then whatever you need after the base URL. That's how you're gonna do that. and you do not need to pass any access token at all. That is the real benefit we are getting, which is get, we are getting via the auth provider. Okay, we still be needing to provide what kind of method we are going to set. Okay, not, okay, it will again call the, so anytime you change anything in the name credential, it will ask you to again revalidate your credential for SM Shivangi auth. Okay, it will, call the authentication protocol again and again to do that. Okay. So that's what we did. Now let me just save this and see if it is working or not. And if it is working, then I will explain the whole process again. Okay. All right. Let's see if we are now able to do the call out.
yep we are able to get the cases data now one thing i want you to not want you to let me also try that because we created the remote site setting in the first uh, in the the first time we did this call out we added a remote site setting but now that we already have this endpoint added in the name credential we no longer need the remote site setting as well so let us delete that remote site setting and see if our call out is working fine or not okay <clears throat> so let's go to setup remote site settings let's just delete that all right we have deleted the remote site setting now let us try to do the call out again the aim here is to ch check if remote site setting is now required or not after the name credential okay so let's execute this yep we are able to get the cases again so that basically to so point that we no longer need remote side settings if we are using name credentials okay now do you want me to repeat the whole process what we did from step one till the last step yes Mohit. okay yes yes okay sure so uh, I have one question here actually. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. uh, do we need to write the services Apex REST cases if we are uh, calling it using the name credential? We, we yes. can directly use only the name credential name and we can call it. You are trying to say that if we remove this part from here and add it directly in the name credential, whether it will work or not? No, no. I mean, if we remove that one and if you directly call it out, will it work? No, it will not work, and I will show you that. Okay, ideally, it should not work. See, uh, I'll tell you why I'm saying it. Let me first, first check it. Yeah, so it's working, right? Yeah, but we did not get a response, right? The case response. Success code is 200, I guess. Yeah, success code is 200. That means it was able to hit the endpoint, whatever endpoint we provided here, which is this uh, SM Shivangi org endpoint, but it was not able to reach to uh here it's not coming into the json format it's coming yeah. into the some html format yeah. that i understand that i understand but here even if you see that there is no case information getting the point mm -hmm. so it is not reaching this url endpoint it is able to That's whatever we created the web services it's not yeah. reaching to that it actual web service which we created for it okay so it obviously it will authenticate properly because it has all the other correct things we have connected app and everything so we can have multiple web services as well right so that's where this name credential come in the picture and then you can append on top of it whatever you want to there could be another web service we create which will use the same name credential and then that name credential will work name credential will help you to connect the org and automate the authorization, and authorization process okay and then on top of that you can provide the actual url mapping which will help you to reach the actual endpoint of your web service you created okay my one question go ahead uh Manjunan. uh since uh name credentials we can create a uh what is it that uh 2.0 or without 2.0 if i go without any of those three it's also possible right Yes, 100% possible. So it's not necessary that you will be needing the uh, auth 2.0 only. Uh, if mm -hmm. I go to the named credential, 
and uh, if uh, again this will call the flow Let, let's see mohit uh, in name credential uh, why we use name uh, uh, name principle in uh, identify type i will tell you the difference between this this is uh, this this per user or uh, named principle does not make much difference for now but if you have a different name credential for different different users you might be using it but the actual difference i am not really sure i will tell you the definition part of it for now for now even if i use the per user then also it will work fine for us so what i wanted to show you is that here if you see the authentication protocol it is not necessary that we use oauth 2.0 it is okay if we use password authentication. In that case, you will be needing to pass the, uh, if I select this one for the matter, okay, then it will ask for the username and password. Then here, by the help of username and password, you will have to just provide once the username and the password, and then also it will automate the authentication process. But this time it is doing with the help of username and password instead of consumer key and consumer secret okay so whatever changes you do here so let's say if i selected the auth 2.0 it was asking for the auth provider because for auth 2.0 it does need consumer key and consumer secret right and consumer key and consumer secrets are stored in the auth provider earlier it was i mean there was no auth providers as such earlier so you would get a consumer key and consumer secret right here okay but they have automated so now you can create auth provider and do this but let's say you select jwt token okay so in jwt token you will have to provide these details if you select let's say jwt token exchange then you will have to provide these different details in order for this name credential to be able to validate the things okay now how will you get the jwt token from the org which is exposing their api we have created the connected app here so in the connected app also you saw that we have uh, we have gone for the auth 2.0 right that is why it has created the consumer key and consumer secret so the org which is, which is exposing our api is responsible to give us the kind of authentication they want you to do it it does not depend on what we support the org which is doing to do, going to do the call out, it does not depend on what they support. It depends on the org which is exposing their API, what they support. Based on what they support, they will give you token, username, password, or JWT token, or other different mechanisms available. And then you will use those mechanisms if they are available here in the authentication protocol. If they are not available here, then it might be possible that this might not work. Okay. So when it comes to do the integration between two systems, the org which is exposing their API, they are the king. They have to decide whether that party who is going to do the call out will be using auth 2.0 or JWT token or no authentication or API token or whatever. It depends on what the org which is exposing their API depends on. Okay. Moit, one more question. Yes, yeah, go ahead. In auth pro in auth providers, mm -hmm. uh, if you go back there, I see like we have the already standard defined uh, applications for which we have to connect. Yeah. And I found there is a one more open ID connect. Yes. So, so if, if if your listed application is not here, like you can say. I don't want to, I want to connect to a system which whose name is not here. Then we will connect the open ID connect. And then with the help of open ID connect, we will be able to do that. So let's say if I want to connect with uh, uh, here in our case, we needed to connect with Salesforce, which was already there in this list. But let's say I want to connect with Airtable or let's say I want to connect to a spreadsheet which is not available here. So in that case, we will be using the open ID connect and then we will be creating. And tomorrow we will do a call out to a system by using the open ID connect to understand this in more detail. 
so don't worry jwd token uh, uh, open id connect i am going to cover all these things so don't worry about it i first want you to be comfortable with the basics like who is doing call out who is exposing the api the person who is doing the call out what are their responsibility the person who is exposing the api what is their responsibility or what is their system's responsibility once we are comfortable with this then we will expand our horizon and we'll try to see the different things which we do not see normally like auth 2.0 is obviously most widely used and almost all the integration middlewares will have auth 2.0 but let's say you want to connect to youtube youtube does not use auth 2.0 or youtube just use the api token so they will give you an api token and you will use an api token and then integration will happen so you need not to go through all these hassles you can just pass the api token in the uh in the call out port and then that should work fine so it depends on system to system as well and which system we are calling and which kind of authentication does that system supports makes our integration uh, process more so that is why when it comes to integration most people become uncomfortable because we are trying to run in an unknown territory we are not sure what other system is expecting from us or what do they support so as an experienced candidate whenever we'll have to attend an integration call with a different system we will have to specifically ask okay uh, what kind of authentication mechanism do you support let's say i have to do a call out to sap now sap developer is with me on a same call and i have to do call out they have exposed something so i will be asking okay uh, you have exposed your endpoint how will i be authenticating with it do you support auth 2.0 so he will tell, okay, I will give you a username and password and that user will have all the permissions. If you just pass the username and password, you will be able to hit the endpoint. That means he's referring us to use the name credential, uh, sorry, the username password uh, kind of mechanism. So there are different types of mechanism available. Even if inside the auth 2.0, it's not necessary that we will always get the consumer key and consumer secret. Okay, there are different types of flow available and username password is a kind of flow we can use in that context. Let's say he says that we do support auth 2.0. I will be giving you a consumer key and consumer secret. Then we are good. We will get the consumer key and some consumer secret. We will create an auth provider add those consumer key and consumer secret there and we will also ask them to provide us the endpoint and everything they will give us or they will ask us in in case of we are creating auth provider they will ask us to give the endpoint we will give them they will put that endpoint and then indicate in the, the authentication process will be smooth there so if you see when we create the auth provider on my screen let me full screen it there are many things Okay, connected uh, app. I want it to show connected app. Just as yeah. So if I go to again manager. If I enable the OAuth setting, you will see a lot of things here. Okay. You can see require secret for web server flow, require secret for refresh token flow, enable client credential flow. Enable authorization code and credential flow, enable token exchange flow, enable refresh token rotation. There are so many things and we will cover, don't worry, we will cover everything. For now, I just wanted you to be comfortable with basics of it. That's how the default selection you will be doing always if other system is also supporting auth 2.0. Okay, but there are more layers in it and we will have to unwrap all these layers one by one. But what I want to see here is that whether you are comfortable with the basics of this or not. So for that, you need to tell me if it was helpful, whether you are able to understand the basics of it or not. And then I will.
I think you want me to repeat the flow again, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's do that. So let me open this class. Sir, just a doubt. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, by providing the consumer key and consumer secret, we mm -hmm. are telling the other uh, uh, other or that <clears throat> it is an OAuth type of uh, authentication process. So you have to use OAuth uh, 2.0 authentication process, right? Yes, by by giving them consumer, see, you will create a, a connected app and you will select the OAuth setting. <clears throat> and you both, you and the other system owner both agrees that we will be okay to do the integration via OAuth 2.0, okay? And then when he gives you a go ahead to create a connected app, you will create a connected app and he will ask you to provide me consumer key and consumer secret so that he can use those two things and do the integration. Okay. Many times you will be hitting the APIs of the system, which the API token. So in that case, they will just give you API token. They will give you the endpoint and API token, and you will use the API token in the authorization. You'll see the, the same way we did request.set has an authorization, and here you will pass the API token. That's it. And then you will be able to do the integration. So it depends on other system. Okay. We will, uh, okay. We will not, uh -huh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so instead of providing uh, the consumer key and consumer secret, are there any other options to make the authentication for I means by providing token or JWT or any other in yeah. there are you, there, there is there is a possibility that you do not do any authorization or authentication. You just say that this is an open API. I don't want anybody to use any authorization. If you have the endpoint, you will be able to do the call out. All the free APIs which we used, the all the Google APIs which we used, mm, right. Out, those were free open APIs. They were there was no security involved in it, but Salesforce recommend us to use the Auth 2.0 because it is secure way to connect uh, in the API integration uh, landscape. Okay. Yes. Oh. So right, it depends on target auth, what they provide for authentication. Okay. So let me repeat the flow once again and then go to the question. Okay. This is the org, SM Shivangi org, where we have created the web service. In this web service, we have two methods, get method and post method. And this is the end point of it. Now, here we just write the end point of an endpoint, but the actual endpoint will consist of your base URL along with services, apex rest, and then the URL mapping you provide here. So combining all will become the actual endpoint which a third party system will be using to do a call out to you. If you are exposing something, then another system will be doing the call out because here you have created, this is nothing but an API. If you combine these cases with base URL, APIC services and APIC REST, then this will become an API endpoint. Okay, so when the people say that they have created an API in Salesforce, they mean that they have created a web service class which has an endpoint and other people, other system can hit this endpoint. Okay. That is the basic meaning of when they say I have created an API or you may, you may give, go in a call, technical call where other system will ask you to create an API and give them the endpoint. Okay. So that's what they basically mean is that you will create a web service class and create an endpoint and give them the combined endpoint like this URL slash services slash epic slash cases that will be the end point actual end point okay so this is what they want but you as a salesforce developer will create an api and in order for any other system to be able to do the call out to that api we need to have authentication and authorization now here is a very important question what is the difference between authentication and authorization Authentication basically means that to check whether you are an authentic user or not, it's like logging into the system. So you open your laptop, you will have a password for it. 
when the moment you provide password for it that is basically the authentication mechanism which will check whether you are an authentic user to use the system or not if you are the owner of it you should know the password of it if you provide the correct password then you are an authentic user and system will allow you and will open the windows for you that is authentication authorization on the other hand is to basically check whether you are authorized to do something or not now you were able to open the system but let's say you are not allowed to go to the drive c because drive c is associated with the company admin okay so although you are an authentic user but you are not authorized to go to drive c because drive c belongs to admin so that process is basically known as authorization authorization basically means whether you are authorized to do something or not whether you are authorized to get the cases or not whether you have proper permission to get the cases or not whether you have proper permission to read the cases or not let's say you have opened the get uh, api http get and here you are returning the list of cases but the user who is doing the call out does not have any permission on case object so in that case he will not be authorized to view the cases even though he is an authentic user he is not author you have not authorized him to do certain thing and how do you give the that authorization here different scopes you select and that's how you will give them access if they have full access on the system then that means they are authorized to do these things they are authorized to manage data they are authorized to view data okay but if you do not provide the necessary access that means they are not authorized to do in that case they will only be able to do the things which you have authorized them to do so you authorize those people okay you authorize them and help them what they can do so that is basically the difference between authentication and authorization this is the first interview question comes in from the integration uh, topic the difference between authentication and authorization okay and then once you created your endpoint somebody else need to call it this time luckily it was a salesforce system so the reason why we choose salesforce system is that from the salesforce itself you should be comfortable with how to do the call out versus how to expose your api both things will be able to cover in a single attempt okay that's why we choose salesforce but we will also call other system as well so we will do a call out to call the youtube we will do a call out to call the linkedin we will do a call out to call the gmail if you want and if we have enough time okay so and i will tell you how to find those api endpoints and everything from their website so that you can even if you want to explore it on your own you should be able to do that now exposing api was one part doing the call out was another part earlier we were doing the call out with the help of session id this session id itself was doing authentication and authorization for us if you have a valid session id that means you are a valid user and you have all the necessary access to perform the operation so this session id was session id is something say what happens in the back end is that salesforce understand that if you have a session id for salesforce login that means you have obtained that session id via a via a legal channel or via a valid channel if you have a valid session id that means you have a valid access to that system and you are allowed to do those things okay so that's what we did in the first attempt but session id obviously is not a good approach and and even the username and password is not a very good approach but you can still use username and password which is better than at least using session id why we used auth provider and name credential is to automate this whole process now if we use let's say if we are not using the name credential and if we use username and password you will have to send the username and password in the http call out okay this is over the http protocol this will go to the servers and the username and password will be exposed in the server there are very high chances that you may uh, you know your security might be breached because your username and password were there in the server and someone can try to access that so sending username and password over an http callout is a 
very bad thing. If we use name credential, no matter if we are using just the name password or client secret or client token, if we use name credential, then it hides all those things. Your HTTP callout will not have your username or password or client secret or client token in the HTTP server. This happens in the backend. With the help of name credential and auth provider, you just removed uh, or you just make yourself safe by the uh, you know internet risk of having your tokens and password everything on the server so it automates the process it improves the security of your system and it obviously is a better way of doing it because you need not to obtain the access token again and again or you need not to worry about sending the username and password again the server there are obviously different ways to do it like you can store those username and password in the custom metadata and then do the call out that is also possible and earlier we used to do that we used to create a custom metadata where you, we used to store the username and password and then use the metadata here in the endpoint but this is the latest way. This is the most secure and best possible way because you need not to do anything. Just need to add the name credential. That's it. Work will be done. Now, whatever I have written here is very important. Most of the time people get confused with where in which org shall we be creating connected or in which org shall I be creating auth provider in which org we will be creating name credential. So the org which is exposing the API that org is responsible to basically check who should be able to access this endpoint. So you will create the connected app in the org, which is exposing API and rest of the other things will be done in the org, which is doing the call out here. Both the orgs are Salesforce, but in the real scenario, most of the time you will either be exposing your API or you'll be doing the call out. Okay. So if you are doing call out, then you will be creating name credentials and auth provider. If you're exposing, then you will be creating the connected app. So connected app basically means that who can access your Salesforce org. In whatever, whatever you provide in the connected app, that means you are allowing that app. Connected app means you are connecting another app. You are allowing another app to be connected with your Salesforce system so that they will be able to access your Salesforce instance. What they can do, what you can, what they cannot do depends on what scope you provide. But connected app basically means that you are allowing another app to be able to connect with your Salesforce instance. Okay. So I hope this is clear to you guys. Connected app, name credential and auth provider, remote site setting and uh, I will copy everything. Uh, so let me first copy the uh, call out code and send it on the WhatsApp. And then I will copy the uh, exposing API code as well. I want you to practice. We will do the couple of call outs today. Uh, not today. We will do a couple of call outs tomorrow. But first, First part will be to understand what are the other authentication and authorization mechanism available because that's where most of the people get confused. Even I was highly confused when I first heard this term JWD token and all those things. I want you to be comfortable with it. And uh, then we will do a couple of callouts to other systems. And we get this in other group as well. In Salesforce, into, yeah, let, why not? Uh, see, this whatever I'm doing here has to go to the first batch as well because in the first batch, we did not cover integration in much detail. Uh, we just covered it. But, uh, but the fact is that most of the people in the batch one have already got jobs, so hardly anybody res respond there. Which is good, like like for me as a teacher, that is a good thing. <laughs> and like people are not asking question much there. No, this is not about a job. This is about uh, enhancing the skills. Yeah, uh, so they must be busy in their own uh, uh, work, which is okay. Yes, I will upload the recording. Let me first uh, stop sharing and. Uh... Move it ahead.